Hello, and welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio, second Friday food, wine, and travel show. I got that. I was like, what? <laughs> With the International Food Wine Travel Writers Association. It is a mouthful, uh, but we love our second Fridays because we get to chat with travel writers and photographers about their destinations and uh, recent adventures. And it's getting exciting because Europe is back open. So you're going to be hearing a lot about Europe um, over the next few months here on Big Blend Radio. And uh, to kick it all off, Scott Kendall is back on the show. He's a travel writer and photographer. You can follow his uh, stories if you go to his website. He's the editor of playstayeat.com. And if you want to learn more about the International Food Wine Travel Writers Association, go to ifwtwa.org. We say iftwa, but welcome back, Scott. How are you? Welcome. Uh, doing great. Uh, enjoying being back in the States, but definitely had a good time uh, visiting uh, Europe in May. Yeah, cool. I know everybody's nice. out and about. It's exciting. Mm. We're seeing people travel globally again. And what was that like? I mean, were, were you a little nervous getting back out there or did you just like, hey, let's let's eat all the gelato we can? Well, for the <laughs> most part, we just made the most of it. Uh, but yeah, the, you know, you always have, you know, there's always there were still some things that we didn't have to deal with when we went several years ago. And even though COVID was pretty much over, there were a few instances where we either had to wear a mask or mm. we didn't get tested coming back to the state. So, uh, but you know, other than that, uh, I'd say 95% of our experience was the same as pre-COVID. So uh, they, they are opening up and uh, they're, uh, I, they're really happy to see people come. I'm sure. We were happy to, to oblige. Yeah, yeah I, bet. I mean, cool. We all feel cooped in, right? I know Nancy and I travel across the country, but um, full time. But so we're not cooped in, except for we no. are on a chicken farm right now. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so maybe cooped in. I had to do that. Um, but you know, it mm. feels like okay, everyone's getting back to communication and um, in person and going out to all these attractions, activities, festivals. So it's exciting to to see. But so you went to Paris. You went to what? You went to France, Switzerland, and Italy, right? Right. Huh? Oh, nice. Nice. For three mm -hmm. weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Yeah, we started in Italy, uh, flew into uh, Florence, uh, spent three days in Tuscany and Montepulciano and uh, the hill country, uh, went to Venice for a few days, uh, then popped over to Lake Como, uh, uh, took the train to Grindenwald, Switzerland, and went to the Jung Jungenfrau. I never can pronounce that, the Jungenfrau Chalk. Uh, Brendan Wall, wow. the top of Europe, uh, mm -hmm. did that for three days and then uh, trained over to Paris for, for nine days. So it was a wonderful three weeks. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Sounds I mean, three really weeks out and about and going to yeah. the top of Europe. Is that where that walkway is, that that um, that bridge um, that I looked at? I'm like, I can't look at it. I'm going to, I'm scared. Yeah, I, I think you're referring to uh, First, uh, which is right yes. near Brendan Wall. But there's actually yeah, that uh, trail kind of is hugs the uh, cliff walk. And uh -huh. so, I mean, there's, <laughs> it's just there. And if you don't like heights, you probably wouldn't enjoy it. My wife actually took the long way around and met me uh, at the end. Um, but yeah, that was just uh, an incredible view. Uh, but the top of Europe was similar. They had a bunch of observation platforms that you could, you know, look all around and everywhere you look, there's mountains and valleys and glaciers and uh, just oh, a, wow. an incredibly pretty country. Nice. It, that's what it seems like you had like really good food, wine, right? I mean, the food, well, yeah. I mean, you know. Wow, well, how then can you, you not? <laughs> and then the architecture and then you have the natural beauty. It seems like you got a little bit of everything on this trip. Yeah, we, we did. And, uh, you know, the outdoor landscapes and, and that's always at the top of my list. And, you know, we certainly sprinkled in some good restaurants and museums and uh, even went to the French Open in, in Paris while we were there. So uh, had, had a good variety, uh, but definitely the, the scenery, the mountains, the rivers uh, is just uh, it's, it's incredible. 
I know you've been doing a lot of videos, a lot of different stories. Um, so yeah, I mean, you've been you've been writing away. So what's that like to keep notes of all these different names? Because that's the thing when you're doing all these different mm -hmm. languages to get them all straight. And, <laughs> you know, yeah, and I think that's something you kind of develop your own little routine to probably like you guys have your own routines when, when you do what you mm -hmm. do. Um, yeah, I, I do take a lot of photos and I, I try to like keep up with those and, you know, not wait like a month and then go back and say, now, where was this or where was that? Because, yeah. You know, so, so many things, you know, I think I'm going to remember, but if I don't write some, some notes down or, you know, maybe name the photo. So, you know, it brings back those memories. And then I do have a, a notebook and I, I take notes, you know, as much as I can. Uh, my other source to, to help me remember things is my lovely wife. Uh, <laughs> she, She's always very helpful. Like I'll say, do you remember the name of that restaurant or, you know, what did you have at, you know, such and such? And and she's usually pretty good about that and kind of filling in, you know, the details when, when I forget. And, uh, and yes, I, do forget yes. I have to do that for Lisa all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I just I photograph everything now. I've learned to photograph every menu, mm. every sign, you know, it. it the one thing too, you know, I was looking at your photos like of Lake Como and you caught it. It's this beautiful sunset, you know. Mm. So when you're doing these kind of trips, it it becomes more epic since we've been held back, right? Because of COVID and everything. So yes, yes. And so planning, I mean, did you look at where you wanted to be for the right timing? I mean, because I know that travelers sometimes this is the the one and only big bucket list adventure. So any tips for travelers going to Europe to catch the places at the right time? Yeah, I think, you know, you almost have to do a lot of planning and research ahead of time. I mean, if you're, if you're someone that just likes to wing it and you don't really care whether you do certain things, that, that's fine. And, you know, that's, you know, your style. But as far as me, not only being a, a, a writer and, you know, trying to capture things that I think my readers want to look at, um, you know, I... I want to make the most of my time too so yeah I, I do a lot of planning uh i look, do a lot of google searches and uh i look at maps a lot because it's amazing how how much it helps when you look at maps and you have an idea of oh there's verena and from verena that's how you get to bellagio and you know otherwise it's like well i know it's somewhere on lake como but um so yes i i did a lot of research and i'm a little ocd when it comes to, to planning and and um you know i i don't want to plan every second because um, sometimes that does take some of the, the fun out of it. But I find if I mm. plan the framework and then leave time within that framework to, you know, do spontaneous things, uh, it works out best. So, you know, I usually have a few things planned for each day. You know, we're going to do this and this and this. But then I leave win windows of, you know, several hours open, you know, throughout the day to say, hey, well, what if we're walking down the greenway and we see uh, a really cool church and we want to check it out? Yeah, I don't want to say, oh, well, it's not on my schedule. I can't do that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, there, there's, there's a little give and take uh, trying to make sure that you definitely do the things that you, you know you want to see. But a lot of things you don't know what you don't know. So, uh, you know, when, when you travel a lot you always see things so you're like oh i didn't even know that was there or i never heard mm -hmm. of this um so yeah definitely mm -hmm. uh schedule but leave some time in to to you know kind of change your your uh day if you need to it's it's fun to get lost you discover a lot of things when you get lost <laughs> i agree I ask my wife that uh, whenever we do get lost which happens every now and then you know I, mm. she, she kind of looks at me he's like i know getting lost is the best way to learn a, a new area it's fun <laughs> well <laughs> it, it's what happens you know for sure and you know I, I love that you're talking about maps though because i feel like we do so much using gps that it's always you're looking at the little yeah. dot that that's moving it's kind of like you don't it, it's kind of like karaoke you're not with the full band hearing the real thing right. versus, you know, following the bouncing ball on the words. It's kind of like that in GPS. And we somehow actually don't know where we are. Like we, we've lost that context of the sense of place, where places are that sense of place. And um, mm -hmm. you're just going and it's just you could be in a state traveling a state and have no idea if you went north or south. 
I, I agree. <laughs> I've, I've been there, done that. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so I, I think GPS is great, but yeah, I think we also mm -hmm. kind of, it's nice to, you know, know the area as much as you can and, you know, do a little research and, you know, sometimes GPS doesn't work. Sometimes yeah. you know, you're not listening, you miss a turn, you know, but those things happen. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I find it's helpful to, you know, at least look at some maps and kind of try to be familiar with the area before mm -hmm. you, you visit. I like to look at Google's topographical maps. I think that's just almost like you're there. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes you really want to go. I don't know that it helps you once you're there, but it, it's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, definitely. Research. Yeah, especially if you're going to Italy or Switzerland. Yeah, and, you know, the you're going on top of the world, you can look at <laughs> There you go. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. I what? like it. What is it like in regards to getting around? Did you drive on the other side of the road or did you get taxis? Do they have Ubers? Are you using GPS and is it the same Google voice or what, what's that like? <laughs> well, I, I've done all of the above, uh, but I'd say for this, this past trip, we wanted to limit how much we were driving. Um, for one thing, it, it is more stressful when you're driving because, you know, you're doing the driving and if you get lost or whatever. So as much as we could, we took uh, trains, subways, uh, ferry, uh, the ferry boats. Um, mm -hmm. And the only, the only time we actually drove during this trip was the three days in Tuscany. Uh, we flew into Florence and stayed one night there. And then we rented a car and drove down to uh, uh, Antonori. Uh, one of the, the, the best wineries I've ever been to, just south of, oh, of wow. Florence. And then we drove to Montalcino and Montepulciano and just kind of did things in, in the, that hill country for those three days, drove back to Florence, turned in our car, and then the rest of the, the trip was all trains and subways. And um, uh, I think we took a taxi a couple of times. Uh, but mm, awesome. yeah, uh, public transportation in Europe normally is, is pretty good and reliable. So I, I'd advise, you know, unless you just are going to out of the way places that you can't really reach by, uh, by train or public transportation, um, I, I wouldn't drive. It, it causes some extra stress that probably you don't need. Um, so uh, especially if you're on the wrong side of the road. Now, yeah, that's we, a good were, <laughs> you know, we were on the right side of the road when, when we did drive. But we have driven in, in England before, and and that's that's just you know you're in a new place and you're on the wrong side of the road. And you see cars coming at you, and your wife and is tighter. You. You're from Texas. I mean, how do you go from Texas, big wide open Texas, to, to here's England. little tiny streets? I mean, that's like a whole other, you know. It's a transition <laughs> for sure. That, that is that is a mm -hmm. whole big deal and, and that's what's so I think interesting about Europe how everybody is so close to each other so it is easy to get around and go to different countries right you know yeah. versus here it's like okay um, right now we're in North Carolina we'll be going a long way to get to uh, to Mexico or you know Canada's not that far but mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's it's mm -hmm. different in Europe that way oh, you can definitely, get around. definitely. Mm. did you go in a gondola we did. Um, and cool. it's funny because I've been to Italy five times now and I'd never been on a, the gondola before. Um, but my wife was with me and I'm like, you know, we got to do this at least once. So we actually we went mm -hmm. on a, a nice uh, uh, three hour tour with the tour guy uh, in, oh, okay. in Venice. And uh, part of the tour was we got onto a gondola for about 30 minutes or so and went through the Grand Canal for a little bit and then some of the side canals and, and it was really cool. Um, you know, there were some uh, that were passing by and they had, you know, the singers and, and, you know, that kind of adds a little romance and kind of, uh, it was, it's, it's pretty cool. cool. I'm, I'm glad I did it. Uh, That's it's nice. not, it's not cheap, but, uh, definitely, I think if you're in Venice or, you know, a town that has the gondolas, uh, yeah, it's worth, worth, worth the, uh, the effort. Yeah. Well, it's part of the experience. I mean, yeah. we're known for that. And we went on a gondola ride in, um, yes. There's what I know you can do it in Vegas, right? But we Lake did it Havasu. in Lake Havasu, yeah. and the, and the <laughs> guy doing the gondola could sing in <laughs> Japanese and German opera. Yeah, and so right? it, it was, was and so we went under the Lake Havasu Bridge, the London Bridge, which is the London Bridge, and it was sunset, and all these bats flew out, and he's singing opera. That was the, it was, <laughs> that was one weird. of the weirdest things we've experienced, <laughs> but it was cool. 
it's definitely something you should put on your list if you don't get to oh, I may do that. We're, we're going to Vegas in October. So, you know, we'll, we'll pick out the Venetian and. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, we'll go yeah, on the, cool. yeah, go under the London Bridge. With the, yeah, you know, that, that's. Five, Lake Havasu isn't too far from Vegas, no, you know, but and Vegas is changing too. So that would be interesting for you to go from being in Italy to Vegas, you know, where the Bellagio is, and you know, go to all those and, and have a look at the Venetian. Um, you know, when you think about Venice, it's something I wanted to ask about this because I've watched that Venice is changing. Like it's there's a lot of water that comes in. Like, it, did you see any hear anything about that? That there, I mean, it could go bye byes. <laughs> it, it certainly could, and there are certain time, <clears throat> times of the year where, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, like the Basilica mm -hmm. will have a few feet of water in it, um, so that's not unusual, um, and it wow. seems like it's getting a little bit worse as each year goes on, so, you know, hopefully, oh, wow. hopefully, you know, that's not going to be a permanent thing that keeps people away, but uh, there are times where they have to close the, the doors, and uh, you see pictures of people in you know, waiting boots where there's several feet in you know, St. Mark uh, Plaza. Wow. Uh, when we were there, we were pretty lucky. The, it hadn't rained much and, and the water levels were, were low. Um, so we, we had a great time and, and it was great weather, but it's not, not always the case. Yeah, that's it's mm. something to think about when you're going to these places about really treasuring that experience because things are changing you know everybody can have their different beliefs on climate change of how why what but things are absolutely changing and that's something to be aware of even about what to pack mm -hmm. i mean one minute you don't need sweaters and the next minute you need a you know a snow jacket exactly <laughs> <You know? laughs> how was that because you went to the top of europe i mean it well, looks yeah, pretty it, it, cold, and then at the same time, you're in sunshine and sunsets in Lake Como. So right, so yeah, most of our trip, you know, certainly it was you know uh, the middle of late May. Uh, mostly we packed shorts and t-shirts, and and my wife and I were when we were packing, we're like, well, we need something for Switzerland because we're going to be mm -hmm. you know, twelve thousand feet up, and it's you know 20, 30 degrees. And so I did pack one heavy jacket, and then uh, we dressed in layers. So I had you know a couple long sleeve shirts and a sweater, and and then my my large coat and when we went to the top of europe i mean you take the train up there and then they have a lot of indoor areas and then you can step out onto the platform and stay out as long as you want so it wasn't like we were hiking up a mountain out, mm -hmm. outdoors in the elements for you know long periods of time um mm -hmm. and, it, and it was actually you know it was around 30 degrees when we were uh, at the top of the world or at the top of europe and uh it was it was a little chilly but you know we were out there for probably five or 10 15 minutes and then we'd come back in warm up go back out for a little bit um so it was, it was very manageable but we, we did need that that heavy jacket for mm -hmm. higher elevations and you can always get one there you know it's true you don't have to weigh your suitcase down you can but then you know nancy and i are take one of those. long johns We're, i know i know but listen you got hot chocolate right mm -hmm. do they have oh, yes. hot chocolate mm. at the top of europe they have a lint chocolate shop and no. they have, you know the lint chocolate they have mm. cocoa so you can get your hot chocolate uh you can ha have you know a hundred different flavors of chocolates and wow. uh, and it, it was really impressive. They actually have a little lint museum, and then they have a little shop where you can, you know, shop till your heart's content. Um, so cool. we, we did go there, and we, we brought a little chocolate back. Yeah, of course you did. I mean, you you're in to. Switzerland. So is it true yeah. that, like, this is one of the best places in the world for chocolate? I think it, it is. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, you know, Belgium, and I mean, I think every place has their claim to, you know, great chocolates. But I think Swiss chocolate is, you know, somewhere somewhere at the top. Did you find the Swiss Miss? <laughs> I did not find that. <laughs> <laughs> Where was the Swiss Miss? She was on top of the on top of Europe, you know. <laughs> but so I mean, that's good. And the cheese in Switzerland has to be, Ooh, yum. you know. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, we went out to dinner one night and wanted to do the cheese fondue because the table mm. next to oh, yeah. they had, you know, three or four different pots and they had the white cheeses and the orange. Oh, oh wow. Like, and then bread and crackers and fruit. And uh, yeah, it was it's definitely uh, another thing Switzerland is known for uh, is their, their cheeses. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And, th and that's why you have a lot of hiking and walking. And, you know, yes. That's in Europe is a walking chocolate. area. I mean, it seems that, you know, public transportation and walking everywhere 
I think it's a healthy lifestyle, especially. It seems to be. And I know we in, in Switzerland, yeah, those people that we saw, you know, they, they did look very healthy for the most part and you know they were very active and um i think that is just part of their culture is you know they mm -hmm. do a lot of walking and hiking and they're every day and friends, did you learn what to yodel yeah I, no <laughs> you wouldn't want to hear me yodel but we, we, heard, heard, we heard a little bit of that type of swiss music yeah. but not really a lot you know most of the places mm -hmm. we, we went to you know had just your what you might expect to hear in the states uh mm -hmm. you know they, they had a lot of american music and uh so, but every now and then you got the, the kind of the polka Swiss mm. uh, vibes. Um Papa, um mm. Papa music. Um -papa. Cool. Mm. What was France like? Because I know everyone goes into Paris and then you've got the icon, you know, the Eiffel Towers, like here I am. But but did you do anything that people would not expect in Paris? Uh, it, we, we did. And, and this was my, my second trip to Paris. But my first trip, we were only there for like three days. And so we, we had like, the Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe and, you know, uh, you know, did a few of those things that you would kind of expect that you'd want to see. Um, but this time we we scheduled nine days there because we didn't want to be rushing all over the place. So uh, and we still did the Eiffel Tower, but we we did it at night and we took a, a, oh, sunset, nice. a sunset cruise on the Seine. So uh, you get on the cruise boat right next to the Eiffel Tower, and then there's about an hour where you're on the Seine River and the sun's setting, and you're going under the bridges and you know oh, past nice. the Louvre and the Notre mm. Dame, and just, just a, a perfect way to start the uh, the evening. Um, had a glass of champagne, and, mm. uh, and of course my wife was with me, so uh, we did that. Came back, and as we came back to the Eiffel Tower, and I think you can see that in some of my my videos. Mm. Uh, it had been it got dark during the the cruise and then the eiffel towers lit up and gold lights and this kind of glittering and then we made it to the the base of the uh eiffel took the elevator all the way to the top and then just kind of looked out at the city and you know they they call it the city of light for for a reason mm, mm, um, nice. and uh you know you could see the arc de triomphe uh, in the distance you could see sacre Coeur, you could see uh, the Seine River kind of winding through the, the, the center of the, the city. Um, wow. And that, that was a kind of a magical experience. We were up, up there around midnight. Um, wow. And uh, cool. we, were, we were on, on a tour. Uh, and uh, it just, uh, it, was, it was so cool to not have to like rush through. I mean, because we spent half, half the day basically at the Eiffel Tower and on the Seine cruise. Um, but we, we did that and we walked a lot. Um, we went to uh, Las Vosges, which is the, the oldest square in Paris. And uh, mm. it's just like, it's a park, but they have all these trees nicely manicured and you know, these old buildings that, you know, now are hotels and residences for, you know, the wealthy. Um, uh, we went to Père Lachaise, the, uh, the cemetery. And, oh, wow. Yeah, and, yeah. I've heard so much about it. And, you know, my, my first thought when I heard, you know, 20 years ago, I heard somebody talk about it, like, you know, who, who wants to go to a cemetery? And me, um, me. me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it's huge. I mean, uh, my wife and I were there for probably two or three hours. And you, you walk through and just the, the tombstones and the decorations and uh, mm. the monuments. And of course, it covers, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, so uh, that that was fascinating. And famous people are buried there, isn't that where Jim Morrison is buried? I mean, that's important. It, yes, and, and, and <laughs> you know, that, that that that's the the one thing that people do know about Père Lachaise. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of important or like not important, but famous people that have have been buried there. Uh, but that was definitely uh, one of the highlights. Um, I mentioned we went to the French Open at Roland Garros, um, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it was kind of funny. I'm, I'm, I was a tennis coach for many, right. many years, and I didn't even plan on going and didn't even realize that the French Open was going to be going on at the same time we were there. And so we're on the train from uh, Zurich in uh, Switzerland to Paris, and these people in front of us are talking, and they're talking about going to the French Open. And... Uh, and uh, I, I said, oh, the French Open going? Yeah, I knew, I knew it was around now, but I hadn't really looked. And they said, yeah, you know, it's the, the first week is this week and then next week. And my wife looks at me and she's like, well, you want to go? 
And then I'm like, you know, it's probably hard to get a ticket and they're too expensive and yada, yada, yada. Um, and, and then uh, 10 minutes later, I'm like, you know, when's the next time I'm going to be in Paris during right. the open? <laughs> so yeah. we actually got online and uh, found some tickets for uh, that, that next week and uh, spent a, a day at Roland Garros. I saw some great tennis. Uh, saw See, some the spontaneity tennis. pays See? off. Uh, yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. And, and it happened to be, uh, you know, we found a day that we didn't have anything planned. And so, you know, that's when we got our tickets. And so, yeah, it's a, uh, it's good to be spontaneous and have a little extra time. Yeah. That's it cool. sounds, you mm. know, the, the traveling with your wife and all these magical experiences um, and also, you know, you, the thing with heights being on top of the world and of mm. course being in Italy. And I mean, all of these experiences, is that a secret to a long lasting marriage? I think it no. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think okay. it, yeah. I, 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 I would definitely advise anybody that has a chance to do that with their partner to yeah do as many things as you can together. Um, and and I, I travel some on my own. She does some things on her own because of you know, she's still working um, as a she's a professor of nursing. Um, but uh, she's able to do a lot of things online. And so we just try to schedule things where, you know, most of the time we can do things together. And, you know, sometimes we do our own thing, but yeah, it, it definitely helps a lot. And you don't want to just, you know, be in your house 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. like, I think no. everyone's had enough of that. <laughs> they want to <laughs> yeah. go, they want to go eat chocolate and cheese mm -hmm. and have wine and, you know, champagne outside the Eiffel Tower. I mean, come mm -hmm. on, this sounds amazing. One thing too, like when you think about Europe, you know, with us doing a lot of travel across this country and, and other countries way before, but, you know, we start looking at architecture and, you know, you know, we're, we understand Texas, the Southwest and the West, and then suddenly we're in Connecticut and the architecture is like, everything's from the 1700s. And we're like, how did, you know, so it's this whole other thing. And of course we've got our native American uh, ceremonial sites and ruins. And so you look at architecture going way, way back. And then, you know, what we have, you know, 1700 is modern, you know, but then you go to Italy and France. I mean, are you looking at going, oh, what a, what a charming Victorian house when all of these are so much older? Like, how do you look at the architecture? Do they, I mean, are they different styles? I know that everything comes from, like, we have the Greek revival and, and you know, it comes from those kind of places. But, I mean, when you're at those iconic you know, buildings and it, it's just got to be okay. Who really cares if it's Victorian or not? <laughs> right. Know? It's just really, really cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. do they have different things that they tell you this is this style or I mean, you know, sometimes they, they do. And, you know, a lot of times it's just the, like when we were in Paris, you know, there's, uh, you know, they've had the, so many, the, the war and the revolution destroyed so much that, you know, even though there's, you know, a hundred or 200 years old, a lot of the, the newer things uh, give Paris kind of that unique feel. You know, a lot of the buildings are very similar looking. They were designed by the same folks. Um, and, but then you got to the, the country. We went to La Corone and Rune, which is the, uh, the oldest restaurant in France. And uh, it's also the place where uh, Joan of Arc was uh, oh, born yeah, in the yeah. state. Wow. And that, that was really interesting. But then mm. you had your more your cottage type looking old timbers and you know the, the, the buildings that have still been there for a thousand years. Wow, uh, it's, it's just amazing to, to look at them and say that's mm. been there that long. And you know, wow. medieval buildings you think about when they didn't have bathrooms, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a whole changeover <laughs> you know, what they did back back in the medieval times I mean we don't need to go with what they did but mm -hmm. I mean think about it those buildings and then just the different wars that these buildings have been through Seen. you know they could see mm -hmm. I know yeah. but imagine you know we look at now like okay let's get a, you know buy a historic home and renovate it and you know like if no matter what it's a money pit. I don't care what you do, no yeah. matter what, I, when you buy an old house, you're mm -hmm. going in, <laughs> you're going uh -huh. in with a dollar and you're really going in with a lot of pounds. <laughs> but when you think about it, imagine, you know, owning a medieval house and how that is to keep it up and maintain mm -hmm. it. And, you know, and that, that would be your, your, your life, you know, just mm -hmm. trying to maintain that home. It's cool though. It's cool. Did anybody have roof gardens? 
Um, roof gardens. Uh, yeah, I mean, like in, in Switzerland, uh, there were a few roof gardens we saw, and, and of course, almost every balcony had, you know, the, the row of banners oh. and flowers, and, and in Switzerland, it's such a, a, like a clean, I mean, it just, everything looks clean, you know, like, I, I don't hmm. know, they get their little brooms out, and they're just, <laughs> you know, they, they, I think they dust the flowers, I mean, everything is just so pristine and clean, and um, wow. uh, that certainly was uh, something we look forward to, just walking through or going on the train uh, past the little Swiss villages. Um, yeah, that was wonderful. Nice. It's, uh, hmm. It sounds like a, an amazing adventure. Where yeah, is does. next? Yeah, where, where are you going next? Well, you mentioned the uh, IFPWA, uh, going to yeah. St. Petersburg in Florida. Uh, so I'll be in, in Bradenton and Anna Marie Island, uh, St. Petersburg, uh, Sarasota, uh, be there for about a week. And uh, then we head up to uh, Las Vegas. Uh, we're going to drive up through the Valley of Fire and Red Rock Canyon. Oh, cool. and, uh, probably mm -hmm. do a little around Lake Mead. And, uh, and we'll hit a few shows and do things in Vegas. But yeah, I, I've been to Vegas four or five times. And I bet you I haven't spent more than two or three hours in the casinos total during those trips. You know, it's, it, it's OK. That's, but that's, that's not probably really safe. It's yeah, we, not to. <laughs> we, we've done a lot of time in, inside the casinos yes. when we used to print our magazine way back when. It had to wait and wait. And, and you're waiting and you're like, you can't really go for a drive. You can't. You're like right on call. Right. And um, so mm. things happen. <laughs> Sometimes yes, you win it's money and you gambling. pay your printing bill. <laughs> <laughs> but but well, there is, you know, um, Vegas, and I know that they're changing over to be more family friendly too, mm -hmm. and right. uh, more resort style. And um, you know, just outside you've got Mount Charles, Mount Charleston, I think it is, well, Char Mount Charles. But it's you go up and it's beautiful. Pinion pine, like all the pines are up there, and maybe not pinion. Uh, but it's the pine, it's the Nevada pine. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, the pinion pine. Go up there if you get a chance. It's beautiful. And it snows up there in the oh. winter time. And so it's what you wouldn't expect just up the road. Um, it's really, really beautiful. But Lake Mead, I'm interested if you can go find all these dead bodies are coming no, out of there, ew. man. I so like that's some real Vegas history come on there's there's stuff going on it's there. like the mafia dumping ground i know so i you know when you go out there like this could be a whole i mean like i was saying things are changing so our sites are changing right. like you yeah. know lake mead is going to be completely different now than what it was you know well, 15 years ago water. yeah water so badly. that's going to be interesting just you never know you might see a toe sticking out of the mud somewhere hey, i'll say hey hun you want to go look for dead bodies at lake mead yeah yeah that sounds <laughs> Come really on. Great. well that's the desert it's a burial i don't think ground. you can get away with that after paris you know yeah. <laughs> so well, i hope, I hope you get up to mount charleston it's it's beautiful up there nice place what? for a picnic especially okay. this time of year you'll probably see fall colors up there believe it or not Oh, wow. Wow. Well, the Valley I mean, of Fire. Yeah, because yeah, it you should. Um, the Valley of Fire and that whole Red Rock area mm -hmm. and you see burrows and uh, which are so yeah. cool to see. Mm -hmm. um, and if you get a little bit outside of Vegas towards Laughlin, you'll see burrows and there's a little town Oatman and uh, with burrow. Uh, That's there, a funny place. There's to a go. lot of burrows out there. That's a yes. very historic, interesting place to go. Is yeah. Oatman. Goldfield. Goldfield, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of movies that were filmed out there and and more burrows. We like mm -hmm. the burrows. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you're going to go to the IFTWA conference, and everyone, this happens every year. Typically, obviously, COVID was a little bit different, but um, that happens uh, September 18th through 21. Um, it's our annual uh, conference where it's professional development, it's networking, it's everyone in the world of tourism, food, and wine get together, and it sounds like a party to me. So check mm -hmm. it out, ifwtwa.org. You do not need to be a member to join uh, the, the conference, but you want to be a member. Isn't that right, Scott? Do you have fun being part of IFTWA? I, I do. There's a lot of great people involved, and I made a lot of good connections and done some some fun things with uh, many many of the members. And so, mm. looking forward to a, a week in Florida. Awesome, oh. Florida, especially this time of year again too. Is in that whole area is awesome. It's beautiful. Everyone, thank you for joining us. And keep up with Scott. Go to his website, which we love the name, playstayeat.com. How mm -hmm. hard is that to remember? Uh, he's got awesome mm -hmm. maps and all kinds of just great stories and photos to whet your appetite to help you plan your next adventure. So again, playstayeat.com. If it was ifwtwa.org. 
And of course, keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Every second Tuesday, we chat with destinations and find out what's happening by the season, what kind of events and activities are happening. And every second Friday, again, we get to chat with all the journalists. So thanks so much for joining us, Scott. It's been a lot of fun. I'm well, hungry. thank you, Lisa and Nancy. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. And safe travels to you guys, too. Oh, you too. Take care. Okay.